as we have noticed last week, this head is not a place where you want to be hanging out for any longer than you have to. It's ugly in there. It's not good. So get out. And thank you for joining me once again. We're back here. We are now officially eight weeks out. Oh my goodness. As of today, it is 50 five days recording this on Sunday, the Sunday after eight weeks out. So seven weeks and six days out from Battle of the River, NPC show Chattanooga, Tennessee, 2024. We're going to talk about all things that were relevant for the past week here. Last week, if you tuned in, a little dramatic, a little dramatic. This week, what do we have in store? Maybe a little less dramatic, possibly. I have been known to have a flair for the dramatic, however. So is that going to stop? Probably not. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what's up. Okay, first order of business. How do things feel? Well, the appetite is way up, like sky high at this point. I did have one day this last week that was a little bit of an effort day to some extent. It was kind of deliberate, but it was just like I knew that I needed a little something and I knew what was coming up, so I took the opportunity and we'll talk about that here. Uh, appetite's way up though. I wouldn't say it's super bad or really hard. It's just a little bit harder than it has been. Energy really kind of comes and goes. It waxes and wanes. Like right now, I'm freaking exhausted. I'm doing what I can to bring a little bit of energy <laughs> for the video here. But uh, as soon as I record this, I'm going taking a nap. Sleep has been pretty good overall, though. It was a little dicey there for a little bit, but this, uh, this last week, it's actually been really good. So how do things feel overall? Eh, okay. Okay. Um, you know, the big thing last week was just mentally everything took a bit of a dive. And this week, it's kind of uh, come back around a little bit. So one thing that you'll know when you go through prep is that there are ebbs and flows all the times. If you really stop to think about like, hey, how am I doing? How am I looking? And then, you know, you get in your own head and then suddenly, you know, we get something like what we had here last week. Definitely like <laughs> the situation felt pretty dire. This week, it is much less dire. So let's dive into exactly how things are looking here. Just the fasted stuff here. I did switch things around. I didn't use the selfie camera on this one and um, I took it in pro mode. So I set my, uh, set my ISO and uh, exposure settings manually. So does it look any better? I don't know. Um, and also, dirty secret here. I'm gonna pull in the mic. Dirty little secret. By the time I record this video, I usually have not watched my progress video back. I watch it back usually for the first time while I'm editing this video. <laughs> so um, when I say like, I don't know, how do things look? I'm going off of like what I've seen in the mirror, et cetera, or what I saw in the camera as I was glancing towards it while I was recording the video. This week, I actually sat down and watched it. And what I can say is um, I am genuinely unimpressed with most of the shots. And strangely, the back double bicep actually is like, I see some stuff there. Okay, like that actually is starting to look okay, and I've still got eight weeks to improve it. So, what I see there for the first time is some evidence that, you know, because I really worked hard on back through an extended off season of two plus years. Um, and I can see like it kind of paid off a little bit. I can see some stuff there that wasn't there before. So very encouraged by that. I'm really not super thrilled with my posing in general. I do have somebody that I'm gonna try and hook up with here locally to help with that for some in-person stuff just because I want a, a little bit of hands-on opportunity there. So I think that will make a, a big improvement. I'm gonna be totally honest with you here. A lot of the stuff that I see in the progress video is like, yeah, I'm, I, I don't like the way I look here just because I'm not lean enough. I'm not seeing what I want to see here. A lot of it is just like, I feel like my posing looks stupid also. And so like I can hit the poses. They're all correct. They aren't great. None of them are. And so I think it's time now at eight weeks out, better late than never, um, to start dialing in on that a little bit more. And of course, I know the value of posing and posing practice. The thing is, I'm just posing and hitting the same shots that I've been hitting, but they aren't good. They need to be improved. So that's gonna be a priority for the next couple of weeks here. I'm getting a couple of those sessions under my belt. So um, one thing I did notice was on plan all week, Friday came around, it was a leg day. It was already programmed to be a high carb day. I just went a little bit over. I went for like an extra 45 grams carbs on Friday, just cause uh, I felt like I was kind of tanked a little bit and I needed it. And I went in on Saturday, had, had a renewed focus Saturday morning, felt good and walking around in the gym with a little bit of a pump. It was a back and arm day. And I kind of started to see like, okay, 
And like that was very encouraging. I saw some good stuff there. And what it really no what you really notice then is like when you're really consistent on plan, and I haven't noticed this before because whenever I've prepped in the past, I've usually taken a cheat meal on a weekly basis. And so you flatten out a little bit, but then you fill right back out. You flatten up a little bit, you fill right back out. And here, like I'm definitely flat overall and that day that friday because of my carbs ended up being around 410 which still isn't that many but it was it was more than what i'm used to and so i'd flat 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 and then i filled back out a little bit and then on saturdays like lo and behold like oh okay so like it was a sharp difference from what i saw like on thursday where i was very flat i went in for chest and shoulders and all the sessions this week were fine they were all really good actually um so it was a good workout it's just like i wasn't really impressed with anything that i saw i'm a hard critic of myself it's, it's hard for me to impress myself i kind of impressed myself a little bit yesterday in there just you know filling back up a little bit and seeing that was really like a, it was a big deal for me I mentioned the carbs on Friday already. I was about 45 grams over what would have been normal for a high day. And, you know, I, I've done this before. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I took that meal out and that was on a high day. So if I'm going to go over, I would like to go over on a high day because those low days or the normal days, I want to keep those low. I want to keep those normal. And if I end up going a little bit over on a high day, clearly you just want to be on plan all the time, but I would rather do that myself. And there wasn't anything. It was just a little bit, you know, larger servings. Like I had some rice cakes. I had a few extra of my meal three carbs. Like I just increased some portion sizes, had a little bit extra of meal five. It was just meals three, four, and five, actually. I just had an extra, you know, 15 to 20 grams um, at each of those meals, and that was it. So it wasn't anything crazy or anything like that, but it, at, at this point here, being eight weeks out and the macros are kind of getting low enough, like, you feel that. You feel that difference. And so that was kind of cool to see. New numbers. So I implemented these yesterday, Saturday. And so I'll throw those up on screen here. My normal day is 220 for carbs. My low day now is 134. I'm in the middle of that low day right now, and hence the nap coming up. I just, uh, you know, I woke up and did a 30 minute walk. Uh, I just got back from doing calves and cardio at the gym and now I will do a nap. There's gonna be another walk later on, so ugh. Um, the high day, protein at 275, carbs at 300-ish after a modification, so that's down about 65 grams. Um, all these are down somewhere between 40 and 65 grams of carbs from where they were previously. Um, and the, the fats are at 65 on that day. So cardio, I'm doing 90 minutes a day, but again, it's not, not like high intensity. Like 60 of those are split into two 30 minute walks where I'm really just kind of cataloging steps more than anything else. And then I do 30 minutes on the elliptical post workout where I try and push the pace. I crank up the resistance a little bit and try just to go for a little bit more of a calorie burn there. So it's really 30 minutes of focused cardio, but it's 90 minutes of dedicated activity that is cardio like, if you will. The split is unchanged. It is still Monday quads. Tuesday is a rest day. Wednesday is back. Thursday, chest and shoulders. Friday is going to be a gluten ham focus. Saturday or Sunday will be back and arms. Like I did it Saturday this week simply because I did the high carb day on Friday. I wanted to go in the next day and take advantage of that. Oftentimes I'll take Saturday as the rest day and then do that uh, workout on Sunday instead. So eh, whatever. D either way, it kind of depends on which day of the weekend I want to stay home on and which one I, I'm okay cramming a workout in. Tracker for the week is here. We'll be relatively brief with it here. Nothing too crazy to show here. Weight was down about a pound and a half this week. Definitely kind of slowed down a little bit, but also I can tell like on the 11th, that 217.8 number, that felt pretty legit. And then it's just climbed up a little bit since then and it's kind of hanging around there. So it's gonna be a big drop. We're gonna hit 216 here in a day or two, I think probably. Um, plus with the macro changes implemented for this week as well, I don't have any uh, concerns about seeing this number drop. In all the columns here, there's the daily weigh-ins and then the next one is the average. The next one over that is the drop from the previous week. Then there's how many pounds to go until we get to the cap of 209 and then the average um, rate that we need to see per week to get to that cap. So we're gonna shoot way past that cap. That is no longer my target. I'm really targeting more something probably in like the 202, 203 range. So gotta keep pushing here. Um, but also it's like, eh, we'll see how it goes. Like that target is very fluid. That's where I'm kind of thinking it is right now, but that could change at a moment's notice just based on how things look. You always play to the visual. The numbers are there as a guide. Um, and clearly like 209 has to be hit or I don't get on stage. That's not a concern at this point. That's gonna happen. I don't wanna drop weight so precipitously that I'm losing size in the process. So I need to make sure that that rate, that it stays in a good range. But here it's like, I could definitely step it up a little bit compared just with what a pound and a half a week. Nothing wrong with that. That's great. Can I drop faster than that and still be in good shape? Yes. What's the cost that I will pay for that? It's harder and I will be more tired.
okay, whatever. And I will be hungrier. That, that's what we signed up for. So I'm good with that. You can see the quality rating for the workouts high across the board, as low as an eight, as high as a 9.5. I almost gave myself a 10 for yesterday, but not quite. Random shit I hear. So it was less random this week, and I just need to give a, a special thanks to Allie, who is a friend of Sam's. I knew her from years ago when she was a trainer at National Fitness here. Hadn't seen her in a while, but now um, she's made her face <laughs> known around Club Four. And so I see her, talk to her every now and then, and she just kind of, you know, chatted to me a little bit like, hey, how's it going? How are you doing? You're eight weeks out? Okay, cool, cool. Kind of getting the lay of the land because she's competed before. She knows it. She gets it. And so she knows what goes on up here as well. And so really it was just kind of like a, dude, you got this, you know? And it, to, to hear it coming from her because she's not invested in what I'm doing at all. She knows, you know, she's been there before. She's been through it. Um, that was, it was helpful. As I mentioned before, I've, I've gone into depth on this uh, topic on the podcast before about if I was going to start over in bodybuilding, what's, the, what's one of the things that I would do differently? And it was, I would be more plugged in to the local scene and I would know more people because then you open yourself up to having more conversations like that, which is extremely helpful. So I don't know a whole lot of people. So therefore I'm a little shielded from that. And, uh, it's not good, you know, living in a silo like that has its, uh, has its purposes at some point. Like you can be a little bit more focused, but it's also like you get way more in your head. And as we have noticed last week, this head is not a place where you wanna be hanging out for any longer than you have to. It's ugly in there. It's not good. So get out, get out of your own head. And it's not just my head, it's most of our heads realistically as well. So that was super helpful. Also, I talked with Bino, who's the um, promoter for the Knox Classic. I've just touched base with him a few times throughout prep, ran into him yesterday and he pointed out, he's like, things are looking good, man. He wouldn't bullshit me either. He, uh, he gives it to you straight. So it was good to hear that. With these changes that I've implemented starting this week, starting yesterday, the goal is just gonna be to embrace the suck for a little bit. Uh, like today is not going to be fun. A hundred and something grams of carbs, 134. Like that's not fun. I can eat. Let me tell you, I can eat. So uh, 134 grams of carbs, like I could easily put that down in a meal. Making that last for a day, that's a challenge. I was going to say, but I'm doing good so far. I'm two meals in, right? It's it's noon officially. So there's, there's a lot of time for this day to go south. So it's going to be a lot of, um, again, keeping very busy, take a nap, uh, et cetera, and eat slow, like be focused while eating, like actually enjoy what you're sticking in your mouth. So um, things to watch for this week, it should be good. I do have a video shoot that I'm doing on Saturday, not for me, I will be manning the camera. Um, this is for a business's grand opening. I actually went there yesterday to shoot a little pl preliminary footage for it to get a kind of lay of the land and see what the place looks like. So that'll be on Saturday um, for a couple hours in the afternoon. Might take a meal with me. That's about as close as we're gonna be to being off plan. Um, tomorrow's session has to get bumped up an hour because um, there's an appointment I have to be here at the house for. We're getting something delivered on Tuesday that I have to be here for, that's a rest day. So a bunch of little things going on, but nothing's really gonna be too interrupting. And I know there's a lot of people who are watching this right now. It's like, dude, that stuff qualifies as things that you have to watch out for this week. I've got this, 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 and I've got events for my six kids, and I've got this crap, and I've got this work thing, and I've got to go travel here. It's like, yeah, get it, okay? My life is pretty simple, okay? So having to be present at the house for a package to be delivered qualifies as something on my schedule, okay? So step off. It's all right. I got a pretty easy life. I get that. And I think, that, you know, something to be learned from that is the easier your life is, the more you set yourself up to be successful in prep. That's just a basic fact. And it's not necessarily possible for everybody to do that. You can't make your life just completely easy, carefree, living on the beach all the time. But taking one step closer to that and just simplifying your life a little bit is always going to set you up for a better prep. So it's all about stress management, time management, being organized. As I like to tell people, get your shit together. Don't try to prep and say, I'll get my shit together during prep. Doesn't work like that. All right. And Q and A for this week. So first of all, I'd like to thank these people, um, all for your support. Um, I appreciate it. So the comments from last week were overwhelming. Like people don't want to see me quit, which I get that. I'm telling you though, like if it comes down to it, I absolutely will pull out of the show. 
I'm not afraid to do that. I am more confident now that that's not gonna be necessary, but if it seems necessary, I will pull the plug on it. Absolutely, I will pull the plug on myself. I am my coach and a coach has to be able to pull the plug on a client if it's not going the way that we want it to. Just understanding what the standards are that you're looking to meet for a given show. So I have to do that for myself, which is hard because I think the tendency is to just kind of default to like, yes, we're gonna pull the plug. <laughs> so I have to not overreact, um, but I totally will do it if I need to. I'm just a lot more confident this week that that's not gonna have to happen. So um, beyond that, um, there's a question here from Michelle, um, also saying you got this. Thank you. So do you, by the way. Michelle is competing a week before I am. Uh, so here's a question. When sick, in prep or not, should you continue in a caloric deficit or is it better to just bring up calories to a maintenance level for a bit and then drop down again? It really depends, of course, on the nature of the illness. Um, and the first thing to consider there is, is this an illness that's impacting your appetite? Um, because that's going to be the thing that wins the day. Like if, if you just can't put food down, then it doesn't matter. Like just you know, get in what you can. You're still gonna be in a deficit because you're under eating. Your body will recover whether you're in a deficit or not. That's the thing. It's like you need to work this out of your system. Feeding yourself more is not usually the solution. Like you're not sick because you're under eating. There is some thought that says, well, you're in a caloric deficit. Your body's a little bit more compromised. Your immune system is weaker. I'm like, I don't necessarily buy into that theory. You find a lot of people who prep and don't get sick while they prep. So it's anecdotal, I get that. There's probably been some research done on this, might be worth looking into. Um, but I don't see that as, um, I, don't, I don't see like pulling yourself out of a deficit as something that's gonna help you recover. So therefore, why would we do it? If anything, you're less active. Um, so it might be like, yeah, let's return to maintenance calories for a little bit, but maintenance while you're laying around in bed is very low. And so it's like, let's just keep it where it is. If there was some value in bringing calories up, but typically the value there is because like you're running a fever, you're burning up, but then oftentimes during that case, your appetite's impacted. So it doesn't matter what your program calories are. You're not gonna be able to hit them anyway. So kind of a moot, a moot point, but in general, I would say no, I would not bring them up. I would just keep them where they are. Just keep things simple um, just because your, your expenditure is gonna be lower too. So. That's it for this week. Um, I thank you all for sticking around and watching. Hey, guess what? Hypertrophy University. It's, uh, it's just about online. So you can go to fivestardigital.com. Check that out if you are interested in, I will say, the best course for learning how to lift. Like fix all of your problems, learn all the shit that you're supposed to do, stop doing all of the crap that you're not supposed to be doing. Right now, this is broken into 19 chapters covering pretty much everything. So you can check that out if you want to, available for pre-order right now. Clearly like you can always reach out and ask me if you have any questions about it as well. So that's it, we are under eight weeks out now. So we'll check back in here at seven weeks out and see how things are going. Peace y'all.